Okay, so welcome back, everyone. Um, the next speaker is Professor Francois Bezeron from Université du Québec à Montréal, and his title is McDonald Eigen Operators: Why and How. Please, thank you. So, uh, good day to everyone wherever you are. Uh, so, I'm going to try to make this talk very combinatorial. Uh, it could be go many ways, but I'm going to try to insist on the combinatorics. So I, whoops, yeah, I want to show to explain to you why we should uh, consider interesting identities and operators uh, obtained via McDonald polynomial. So there are many reasons why McDonald polynomials are interesting. I've listed a few here uh, in many areas. So it could be in the study of the flag variety, uh, diagonal harmonic, Silbert scheme of points, uh, refined knot invariant, many subjects. But I'm going to try to concentrate on the combinatorics. So I'll deal with Catalan combinatorics uh, at first. So, uh, Catalan Combinatorics has a long history. Uh, Ira just now told us about um, going back to Euler. Uh, that would be the classical version where Euler considered uh, Catalan numbers way before Catalan. And uh, over the years, because of many reasons, it has a, evolved uh, along a line that I try to picture here, so classical would be Euler, uh, Catalan or Fus Catalan um, combinatorics. Then uh, Drew Armstrong suggested that we consider rational Catalan combinatorics where you replaced, uh, I put a picture be between uh, below every, everything here. So the classical Catalan combinatorics is going to correspond to the partition uh, n and minus one and minus two up two to one. So the staircase partition, but uh, to go to rational, you just uh, look at a rectangle of proportion A by B, A and B are integers and to take the diagonal and look the largest partition that fits below. I'll come back to the reason why I'm talking about partition in a minute. And then uh, there's a rectangular extension where you remove, oh yeah, I forgot to say that A and B are supposed to be co-prime in the rational case. Uh, there's an extension where you remove the co-prime condition. So consider any rectangle with sides uh, <coughs> integers. And then uh, recently there was interest in uh, what I call triangular partitions, uh, combinatorics. I'll explain this in a minute. And then uh, there we could say that there's a very general setup of partition also. You consider any partition here. So <clears throat> in this rapid introduction, I didn't explain what was a triangular partition. So let me go into this. <clears throat> so what is a triangular partition? You see one here. It's a partition such that uh, take each of the, in the Ferris diagram of the partition, replace each cell by a dot in the north, uh, <coughs> north, uh, northeast corner. Uh, so at the top here, put a, a dot, and then consider the, uh, the convex hall of these points. So here, oh, for, for, wait. So I have, I consider the partition, all the dots that correspond to cells of the partition, and then there are the cells that are not in the partition. Now for those that are in the partition, I consider the convex hall of these points. So you you would get something like the gray portion here. And you do the same for the complement. So you have two convex halls here, and the yellow diagram is the diagram of a triangular partition if these two regions do not overlap. So uh, you could say that this is 
one of the conditions says that the uh, partition is convex, and the fact that the uh, complement is convex says that the partition is also concave. So a triangle, triangular partition is a partition that is both convex and concave. Uh, you can separate, the, and for short, you can separate the partition points in the partition from the complement by uh, some line. So, uh, <clears throat> rational or any uh, lambda uh, dig path, partitional dig paths. So, uh, why do I link dig paths to? Partition, so you fix a partition, could be triangular, whatever, you, you just any partition, and uh, you consider all the partitions that are contained in lambda, and why this, you could think of this as being related to dig paths. You can, uh, this green partition, you can uh, consider it as being. Um, delimited by a path that goes down, right, down, right, etc. I like the red path here, and that cuts off the green partition, the subpartition alpha from the global partition. So there's a bijection between uh, cho choosing a subpartition of lambda and a path like this, and if you choose the partition, the yellow partition to be the staircase, this is essentially the same as uh, describing a dig path. So you could say that I'm, we're generalizing dig paths in this way by considering any yellow partition. Um, now, for any, uh, in this story about uh, Catalan combinatorics, there's also a closely related story about parking function. And the reason why I insisted in describing this in terms of partition is because it's very easy to extend the notion of parking function, thinking about classical constructions related to partitions. So <clears throat> consider, consider any partition alpha, like the green portion down here, and uh, I'm going to con construct or well, consider standard Young tableau of a skew shape. So standard Young tableau of a form uh, alpha plus one to the n over alpha. What does this mean? Is I I take the partition alpha and I that had a column of ones that I slide to the left so that they they're justified to the left. So then I get a new partition alpha plus one over n, and then I remove alpha. So this is essentially like adding along each row of alpha a new box, maybe with zero parts at the top, and then consider a young, some standard young tableau of that shape. So you're gonna fill these yellow boxes with the number one to n in a way that is gonna be increasing along vertical uh, sequences. So, uh, so that I'm going to simply say, don't, I'm, I'm not going to explain the link with classical parking function, but I, I'm going to simply say that such a standard Jan tableau is a parking function. And then there's an action of the symmetric group on this, where you permute the yellow uh, labels and the, the red labels in the yellow boxes, and after permute, So <clears throat> that's parking function. And now uh, for a fixed partition lambda, I'm going to consider all partition contained in lambda and do exactly what I just described. So consider the set of standard Young tableau of this Q shape alpha plus one over n, uh, one to the n over alpha. And I do this for all alpha containing lambda. And I'm going to say that this is a lambda parking function. It depends on n because n here has to do with the height, the global height, and or the number of labels I'm going to put in this. Now, I'm going to take this uh, 
So this is a combinatorial set. I'm going to enumerate this set uh, with symmetric functions. And uh, the, it's the easiest way to describe this to say that uh, uh, this symmetric function that I'm going to associate to the parking function is just the sum of all skew functions obtained by exactly this, the process that is described here. So alpha plus one to the n over alpha uh, skew by alpha. This is the skew function in variable x, x1, x2, whatever. So, so the, re the interest of this is from this symmetric function, you can get lots of information about actual enumeration of uh, parking function if you're interested in this. Okay, so now, <clears throat> in the case where uh, the yellow partition is triangular, there is something interesting that happens, and uh, you can generalize uh, the uh, classical result or classical recurrence about uh, enumeration of dick paths, you know, uh, classical dick paths, uh, if you want to show that they satisfy a recurrence on uh, relating to uh, Catalan numbers, there's uh, the first return to diagonal argument that is used. And this argument goes very well with uh, this, the notion of triangular partition that I described earlier. I won't go into the details here, but I just mentioned that there's a, a nice recurrence for uh, the calculation of this uh, symmetric function that I just showed you uh, using a decomposition into sm smaller pieces where the way you do the decomposition has to do with the first, essentially the first time you go back to the diagonal. And if you want to go have more details about this, you can look this up in a paper that has uh, been co-authored with uh, Michael Mazin, and it appears in the journal that goes with this meeting. So uh, so it's uh, ECA uh, 3, 3, 1 in 2023. Just look it up. It's uh, very nice. And you'll be uh, nicely one of the nice surprise about triangular partition is that they have beautiful combinatorics. I cannot resist showing you one thing. Uh, that the, it, the, that's the fact that uh, the if you restrict Young lattice so containment order for partition to triangular partition, you get a beautiful structure. And I'm just showing this to you so that you, even if you got lost in the details of what I said per previously, you might be, your interest might be poked by the fact that you see such a beautiful structure for the young lattice. And there's lots of nice things that are behind this. Uh, so I encourage you to go and look up the paper with uh, Mikhail where we discussed this. There's not lots of nice surprises. Okay. So that I, I went through this combinatorics because I wanted to explain why McDonald polynomial get into the picture. And so that's the how part, how part of. So um, McDonald polynomials, don't worry if you don't know much about them. Uh, they're uh, polynomials in uh, symmetric polynomial with two, parameter, two parameters Q and T. And they, what's very nice about them is they expand beautifully in the sure basis with positive integer uh, polynomials in QT as coefficients with lots of beautiful properties. So we see here you see H2, H11, H3, H21, H111, and it gives you a flavor of the kind of uh, polynomials you get. And uh, these polynomials have been all around for more than 30 years now, and uh, they, they play a role in many, many interesting subjects. Uh, so it's worth looking at them uh, if, you're, uh, if you want to 
do combinatorics or algebraic combinatorics or whatever. Anyway, um, so uh, these McDonald polynomials, they have um, interesting operators on them. So uh, that's a, a typical approach in uh, uh, orthogonal polynomial theory. When you want to understand a family of polynomials, you look at the operators that for which they are they happen to be eigen function or so uh, if you know operators from for which you have eigen function you can learn lots of properties of these polynomial so here is the same story for mcdonald polynomial so the you there are a bunch of operators that you consider for which the mcdonald polynomial appear as uh, eigen functions and uh, each, for each operator, you need only describe what are the eigenvalues. And the eigenvalues are very combinatorial in spirit. So they're computed out of the cells of partitions. So uh, McDonald polynomials are indexed by partition. So you look at the cells of the partition. They have coordinates, IJ, or Cartesian coordinates. By the way, French style is the way to go uh, for partitions. And they have Cartesian coordinates for cells. And you uh, essentially, what you do is you build up the eigenfunction, the eigenvalues by some functions which are evaluated at q to the i, t to the j, where q i is this first coordinates and j the second coordinates of the cells. And uh, there are <clears throat> interesting variants of this and lots of. Uh, work on of the last 30 years has been done on such uh, operators. And I like one specially that I call NABLA. Uh, it, it's been around for a, a while now. And the NABLA operator is very nice to understand. It just multiplies all of the uh, of the weights of the cells of the partition, so it was the QITJ for all all cells in the partition. So uh, it's very sim. It just multiplies a McDonald polynomial by some power of Q and a power of T, which is easy to. So that's uh, NABLA of H mu, and. Uh, and now, uh, recently, we introduced a super version of uh, the NABLA operator. So that's the super uh, NABLA operator. <coughs> by replacing, excuse me, the uh, eigenvalue by something more complicated and a bit weird, because we consider another McDonald polynomial as the uh, eigenvalue of the original McDonald polynomial but in another set of variables. So there are two McDonald polynomials here. One is considered as an eigenfunction of the, the operator, and the other is considered as an eigenvalue. This might look weird, but it's very efficient in giving us lots of formulas. This is joint work with um, Jim Aglun, uh, Alessandro Iraki, and uh, uh, Marino Romero. You can probably, oh, if you go to my website, you can find the preliminary version of the paper. And uh, and just to give you a flavor, if you calculate this operator on the elementary symmetric function E3, you get uh, expression that I've expanded in the sure basis here. Uh, with the x and y values, and there and a, a third set of show functions here, with no parameters in them, because I the the idea is these are essentially show function in the QT parameters, but but what you get is something beautiful where you have uh, three kinds of show function and everything is sure 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 positive in in this context, which is uh, just the beginning of a nice story. And uh, you can put the data that I had on the previous slide in nicer format if you want, but uh, th that makes the social positivity comes out beautifully. 
now <clears throat> I'm I still on this showing you around the, this l landscape of operators. So uh, there's a general op family of operator that's very nice that uh, is going to play a role in many a situation. And if they're obtained this way, you consider a partition and you just uh, encode the length of the steps in the partition. So three, two, one, one, zero, one, zero, zero. It's just the difference of two consecutive uh, rows. And I just added an extra row at the beginning just for decoration, but this is not crucial. So the three here is just for show. Uh, you could replace it by any value. It would wor work out the same. And uh, so that's the vector of lambda. And uh, the operator, you construct for each such vector, you construct an operator on McDonald polynomial by choosing nicely the eigenvalue. And the eigenvalue is inspired by a formula of negut uh, that is a bit complicated to describe. I'll go over it, over it very rapidly because of time, but it, there's a you'll see that there's uh, a bunch of data that is used. So for each uh, standard Yum tableau of a shape mu, uh, of a shape, uh, sorry, uh, of a sh of, for each standard Yum tableau of some partition mu, you uh, calculate an expression here that is a product of QT, QT terms. And then uh, the vector comes in to construct to build an extra term here in front, and you sum up all these these over all standard Young tableau, and you get an eigenvalue. So sorry for being fast here about this. Uh, maybe by if you look back at the talk, you can look at this more slowly, or uh, it's in papers also. And uh, what happens is that uh, using these operators, you can construct many, many uh, interesting combinatorial identities. So let me go back uh, as a conclusion to the combinatorics. So I mentioned that there's a, a sequence of more ex of extension going from classical to uh, partitional going through triangular. For, for the partitional, you could consider a, a even more complicated polynomial where you have the symmetric function I showed at the beginning, but also with a weight that has to do with the uh, number of cells that are in the partition, outside the partition alpha, inside lambda. So a uh, weight of Q. And uh, it's a proposition that you can look up in, uh, uh, that comes from a paper of Blasiak, um, Eamon Morse, Powell, Poon and Selinger, uh, that you that the operator nabla to the power v that I mentioned earlier applied to E n calculated in Q one x is going to give you this expression. The paper says more, but uh, that's one of the things you can get out of it. And they have also a conjecture uh, that uh, no, no, sorry, I I checked on the computer that you can push this to the partitional context with Q and one. So that would be a conjecture. And also there in, in the same paper that I mentioned earlier about Plasiak and company, uh, there's a, an extent, a, a conjecture about uh, extending to the concave uh, context. And this is very intriguing because it's linking interesting combinatorics and and that uh, combinatorial data to a geomet geometrical property of partitions. So uh, the conjecture says that this uh, operator now in parameter Q and T and X is uh, sure positive in all of the various sure things that occur if and only if lambda is concave. In fact, in the paper, they there are two direction. There's one that uh, so the paper by Blasiak and 
um, Morse Poon and Sillinger, they extended the conjecture of Negut that would imply that if lambda is concave, then you have this positivity. And I calculated the, up to n equal 21 that the converse is true. So that the conjecture would be that this is an if and only if. I'm gonna conclude now uh, by saying that this all falls into the kind of expression you get. Sorry, this might be very too small to see, but you get nice expression here with things that I removed because, because this would not be calculated by this operator. But there's an extension where you can add terms that are very intriguing and that I'm we're still investigating and uh, where you would have more parameters and you would link this to the new tomary lattice and uh, enumeration of intervals and many other questions of combinatorics. And uh, that's it for the moment. And enjoy Super Nabla going around uh, because it's, yeah, so that's it. Thank you very much.